Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us a minute early. Uh, we appreciate you being here. We're just going to take um, a few seconds or another minute to let everyone trickle in. Um, it's great to see some familiar um, names in the attendee list. So thank you for being here multiple times. Um, and I'm also excited to see new names. Um, but you are here for our Maximizing Giving Tuesday webinar. We'll just begin in a few seconds. Okay, I think we'll, we're going to get started right on time. Um, once again, thank you for being here. Um, my name is Marina. Um, I'm the Development and Communications Manager at the King Badwan Foundation US, KBF US for short. We're excited to have you here for our Maximizing Giving Tuesday webinar, which is part of our webinar series um, on fundraising. Um, and just before we jump, in, jump into that, I would like to take um, a few seconds um, to mention what we do if you do not know yet. Uh, but the King Badwan Foundation US, KBF US, and Give to Asia facilitate thoughtful, effective giving across borders, we enable US donors to support their, their favorite causes overseas and provide foreign nonprofits with cost-effective solutions to raise funds in the United States. And with an American Friends Funds at KBF US or Give to Asia, um, foreign nonprofit organizations, maybe such as yourself, can receive tax deductible gifts from US donors while saving the trouble and expense of setting up your own charity in the United States. And KBF US and Give to Asia are founding partners of Myriad, the Alliance for Borderless Giving. We're also our strategic partners on this webinar. So I'm happy to see um, perhaps attendees from KBF US's audience, but also give to Asia. Um, it's good to see such a global attendance. We're really looking forward to the webinar. Um, and to just jump into that, I'm going to give the word to Liz Nganzi. She is also, she's the moderator of the session, but also the co-developer of the webinar. So I let her continue and also um, I'll tell you more about our speakers um, and I'll see you at the end of the webinar. Thank you so much, Marina. Good morning, everyone. Uh, Marina, I appreciate the warm introduction. Um, I am the founder and CEO of the International Social Impact Institute and truly grateful to KBF US for the partnership opportunity with Give to Asia for this enlightening webinar series. We're thrilled to welcome over 770 participants from around the world, whether you're joining us live today or tuning in later. A special thank you to those of you who've been part of our previous programs uh, because your ongoing support is truly valued. Now let's delve into our panel discussion on harnessing the power of Giving Tuesday through effective fundraising strategies. For those unfamiliar, Giving Tuesday is the world's largest philanthropic movement having raised $3.2 billion, yeah, that's billion, in just 24 hours last year in the U.S. alone. Born in 2012 with a simple yet powerful idea, it has since evolved into a global year-round movement that encourages millions to give, collaborate, and to celebrate uh, gen generosity. Before I introduce our panelists, I encourage all of you to actively participate in the discussion, sharing your experiences and posing questions. We want to foster an interactive and inclusive dialogue, and your contributions are instrumental in achieving that. I would like to assure you that we've taken your feedback from pre-event surveys uh, into consideration when developing today's questions. I'm excited to engage with our esteemed panelists and explore the insights. So thank you to all of you for joining us today. 
Now it's my pleasure to introduce three exceptional individuals who bring a wealth of experience and expertise to our discussion. Joining us from Chicago, uh, Illinois, is Kat Murphy-Toms. She's the Director of Digital Communications at Giving Tuesday. Uh, she's also my colleague at New York University, where we teach in the fundraising program. Kat has played a pivotal role in driving digital engagement through the largest philanthropic movement in history. Next, we have Catherine Wendois, who is her colleague, and she's the director of Giving Tuesday of the Giving Tuesday Africa Hub, with over a decade of experience in philanthropy and peace initiatives. Catherine is a driving force in starting shaping conversations and actions for community resilience across Africa. Last but certainly not least, we welcome Magdalene Wanjugu, who is the executive director of Naira Bids Foundation in Kenya and is also a KBF US partner. Um, she is a tech enthusiast and strategist, and Magdalene's passion lies in leveraging technology for transformation and community empowerment. So let's now hear from Kat, Catherine, and Magdalene, Magdalene as they introduce themselves. So please go ahead and unmute yourselves and tell us a little about you. About you. Liz, you covered it. I'm Kat Murphy Toms, Director of Digital Strategy at Giving Tuesday. I've been doing the Giving Tuesday thing for a really long time. So we're in the 11th year of Giving Tuesday, and I first heard about it when I was uh, at the Director of Communications at my local nonprofit association. We were a membership association of nonprofits. And I said, I really like this idea. And I called Henry and, uh, and Asha and I said, look, I'm not only going to steal your idea, I'm going to change the name and we're going to localize it for people here in Chicago. Uh, and I was really nervous. I thought they were going to tell me no, but they said, I love that idea. Take it. You should run with it. So I've been a local Giving Tuesday leader for 10 years now, and now I'm officially on the team. I study the use of digital tools and then I teach nonprofits how to go use those tools to mobilize more good in the world. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Uh, and next, let's hear from Catherine, please. Yeah, Katz, you just took me back to uh, history and the moment when I got connected to Giving Tuesday, I uh, was working for uh, a philanthropic network um, in East Africa. And Giving Tuesday was just a natural way for me to connect and unlock new ways of giving and engage new giving communities in my area. So yes, I too started as a Giving Tuesday leader, uh, now joined the team um, leading um, Giving Tuesday in Africa. But beyond that, I work very closely with Giving Tuesday champions who are our core leaders at the continental level. We currently have 15 country, 15 country leaders and hundreds of people and organizations that activate on Giving Tuesday. So creating opportunities for partnerships, um, having conversations like this today and exploring ways for us to celebrate, inspire uh, and support giving and support generosity across the continent. So looking forward to this conversation and thank you everyone for your time. Thank you, Catherine. And let's please now hear from Magdalene. Hi everyone. Uh, it's really exciting to be on this call today. Um, I've been fundraising actively for the last uh, 10 years uh, or more and mostly for local organizations. Um, and so um, I'm happy to be here, you know, representing a local and probably small uh, organizations. And, uh, you know, uh, we, we joined KBFUS about two years ago, and it's still a learning process for us, uh, engaging in Giving Tuesday and all that. And so, yeah, just looking forward to share my experiences with the audience. Yeah, thank you, Liz. Thank you, Magdalene, and thanks for joining us from uh, Nairobi. Uh, of course, you and Catherine. Uh, and let's just go ahead and I, I want to make sure for those of us who've heard of Giving Tuesday, but not quite sure what it is, I would love, Kat, for you to go ahead and provide us a little bit of a context about Giving Tuesday, um, and then we can jump into the questions if you don't mind. Happy to. As you know, this is my favorite thing to talk about. Okay, so Giving Tuesday is the only holiday in the world that we all celebrate together as a global community, right? If you think about it, we don't even celebrate New Year's on the same day. But on Giving Tuesday, every year for 11 years now, the whole world comes together to celebrate the power of using generosity to affect systemic change in our world, right? 
Uh, it's the also the only day of the year where donors and givers are looking for nonprofits to support rather than the other way around, right? <laughs> um, and as That's you mentioned, very true. It is. It's a real thing. And for nonprofits who are looking for new supporters, this is your day. This is your special day, is what I like to say. Uh, and as you mentioned earlier, Liz, uh, the big celebration day is indeed big. It was $3.1 billion given by individual donors, mostly made up of small gifts uh, and that ladder up to a big number, right? And while many first think of Giving Tuesday as like fundraising Tuesday, it's so much more than that. Right. When my colleagues came up with the idea of Giving Tuesday, they didn't say, hey, let's create the biggest Guinness World Record breaking crowdfunding day of all time. It is that consistently every year, but that's not the point. The reason Giving Tuesday exists is to build the world that we imagine to be possible. The mission of Giving Tuesday, the organization that Catherine and I work for, is to create a world that's based on radical generosity. It's this notion that someone else's suffering should be as intolerable to me as my own suffering, right? And we believe that if we create this society, if we train people to be more generous in their lives, not just through giving to charity, we're talking about uh, having the notion to go check on an elderly neighbor or to bring a lasagna or a meal to a new mom in your neighborhood, these sorts of things. If we train our society to behave more generously, we think that's the path forward for all of us, our entire global community in the years and decades ahead of us. Right. And so just for people who don't know, when Giving Tuesday is, um, I saw the all the all the communication last week, last Tuesday, that it was 90 days away. So we're what now, 87 days away from Giving Tuesday? I think so. That's the right like math? That. Something okay, like that. that. Okay, we're so soon. Folks, it's coming up. Get going. Yeah, it's coming up. Okay, yeah, it's definitely coming up. So it's you know it's the Tuesday after the U.S. Thanksgiving for folks. So this year, what's the actual date? November twenty eighth. Perfect. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Um, and uh, we want to also make sure that people know that Giving Tuesday is also um, um, available to young people who are change makers and want to to participate, right? So if you want to talk a little bit about yeah, absolutely that. Absolutely everyone. Um, to absolutely everyone, right? Catherine, do you want to speak on this a little bit? Who participates in Giving Tuesday? Who's it for? Absolutely, everyone, for sure. And uh, uh, Liz just mentioned young people. So within our movement, we have a sub-movement that we call SPAC, and this is led, facilitated, and mobilized by young people around the world. So yes, Giving Tuesday is for everyone, and it's not just about donations, right? Sometimes I consider don donations as an outcome of so many engagements that you have uh, throughout the year. So individuals um, uh, contribute and individuals take part in this. We have um, networks and networks of organizations around the world who come together to collaborate and experiment on Giving Tuesday, right? Uh, for example, creating engaging ways uh, for them to activate members on that day. Uh, we have corporates and even small businesses who leverage Giving Tuesday to connect with the community, uh, but also establish uh, innovative uh, collaborations with nonprofits around them. So it's definitely um, for everyone, uh, not just fundraising, not just money, uh, consider time, consider talent, but also how generosity is expressed in your own cultures and in your own spaces. Fantastic. Thank you so much. That's a So now that's going to take us into my questions. And we're going to start with strategy because everything starts with strategy. Uh, we're going to talk about strategies for maximizing Giving Tuesday fundraising. And so what are effective strategies for planning and executing successful Giving Tuesday campaigns that can significantly um, enhance fundraising efforts? Um, and I'll open up to one of you to go ahead and start us off. So Catherine, I see you. So maybe if you want to start. Uh, I think just a pick up from what I said, really, uh, uh, Giving Tuesday and engagements on Giving Tuesday the day are a culmination of so many engagements that you have um, throughout the year. So planning is essential, uh, but there are specific um, strategies and techniques that have made uh, Giving Tuesday campaigns um, across um, the world effective 
One is just leveraging the power of partnerships, right? There's um, a strength in unity. And so we've had, for example, nonprofits um, coming together either on that day or um, a week or so, uh, coming together to co-design a campaign, right? A uh, typical example um, I will give is uh, a campaign that's called When Alumni Give. So When Alumni Give is a um, co coalition campaign that brought together alumni serving organizations, particularly in Kenya. The reason why they came together on Giving Tuesdays, despite having their own individual campaigns on Giving Tuesday and any other day, they shared a common um, they shared a common goal, and the common goal is to inspire but also celebrate how alumni give. So they came together under one hashtag on Giving Tuesday to raise awareness on the opportunities for alumni to give. Right, uh, despite that being a collaborative engagement and a collaborative campaign, it created opportunity to build visibility for their own fundraisers and their own and, and their own campaigns in that respective way. So we've seen um, a lot of collaboration around Giving Tuesday and uh, forming strategic partnerships. And beyond that, collaborating around um, how do we put together our thoughts and define a message that is very co context specific, a message that resonates with our communities, not just the specific donors that we are targeting as organizations, but a message that, re that responds and creates awareness about the causes and the values that we all share um, as stakeholders in the space. So um, just giving it over to Kat to continue. I love that collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. And I, I, I love that. Yeah, uh, that that's the whole thing with Giving Tuesday. Um, for me, what I recommend nonprofits do first is to think about a goal for their Giving Tuesday campaign. What is it that you want to accomplish? That might be a achieving a certain dollar amount, but I would also encourage you to say for what a specific dollar amount and what is it going to do. Uh, but that might look different. That could we've seen nonprofits fundraise for other nonprofits on Giving Tuesday, which I think is a really beautiful expression of how nonprofits can be generous on Giving Tuesday too, right? Is there a smaller organization in your community that could use some help and could you mobilize your community on their behalf? We've seen everything from uh, there was a stinky fish challenge one year. There was a spicy noodle challenge one year. Anything that gets people excited to get out and fundraise for your cause or to support your cause in some way, be creative, right? That's what this is all about. It's about being fun and being creative. I love that. And I, speaking to your point about planning, um, is when it, when is not a good time to start planning your Giving Tuesday campaign? <laughs> You mean after Giving Tuesday? <laughs> Meaning, <laughs> or three you know, days right. before? No, I, I, think that, I think a lot of people just sort of like all of a sudden they just start talking, you know, their, the organizations just start sort of communicating like a couple of days before, but you really need to start way ahead. And that's why we, we plan this webinar now. Yeah, start the, the the most successful campaigns almost always they tell us that they started at least thinking about their Giving Tuesday campaign probably six months ahead of time. It does indeed take planning to pull it off successfully. You're not going to be successful if you're simply posting to your social media pages that it's Giving Tuesday, please give to us. That's not going to work. We need to spend time developing really strong campaigns, and that takes time. But lucky for you all, we have it. We've still got some time to plan. Um, the other That's thing, awesome. and maybe we'll get to maybe we'll get to this in a little bit, but the other thing that I'll say is the key to success on Giving Tuesday is using a distributed organizing strategy. So it's not actually about what it is that you're posting on your own or organization social media pages. It's what you're encouraging others to post on their social media pages. So what you want to be doing now is mobilizing and pulling together a cohort of some of your biggest supporters and ask them, hey, instead of just giving us money on Giving Tuesday, will, will you give your network? Will, give you, will you give your time and your energy in helping us get the word out about our cause to your friends and family? Because that's how we end up getting more eyes on our donors and more funds in the end anyway, because people give to people and not to organizations. So what mm -hmm. we want to be doing is using Giving Tuesday to mobilize other people to get out there and 
speak on our behalf. I love it. I love it. So let's hear from from Magdalene, because Magdalene, I want to hear what your organization does or has done around Giving Tuesday. Um, we've heard from the, the the actual folks from Giving Tuesday, but let's hear from you um, so that your fellow partners, um, KBFUS and Give to Asia partners can learn from you. Yeah, um, I agree with Kat and Katrin. And, you know, one of the things is that we've fallen victim of late planning. Uh, and so that has been one of our biggest lessons that, you know, you need, we need to start early and early means as early as when we're doing our action planning for the year uh, and incorporating that and, and, you know, figuring what would be the, what would the campaign be about, uh, what would we need, uh, collecting stories. And I would say this planning early, especially because for small organizations, we don't have the resources, both financial and and uh, technical, um, you know, to do the work. And so, uh, not planning only means that then uh, this leads to a bit of of overwhelmed uh, overwhelmed team, and not really getting through to uh, everything that we had uh, we had planned. Uh, and that brings me to also having a team in place. And, and we've seen the value of, of tapping into volunteers as well as interns. And this is deciding, you know, um, who are you going to have on your team? I, probably you need a communications expert. You might need to assign um, a designer. You might, uh, you know, uh, do you have enough uh, people who can help create the messages? Uh, are they creative? Are you collecting stories? And then who does that? Uh, but then also that means that it's very important to engage the team. Uh, I know for most of organizations, the the fundraising lies with the uh, lies with the with the with the senior management team or probably a grants um, a grants team that you know. But but for small organizations, we don't have that, and so the fundraising lies with the with the with the management team most of the time, the executive director and the programs manager. And so um, bringing in on board, you know, and, and ensuring that you have your team involved ensures especially you're able to collect stories and you're able to find, uh, you know, uh, impactful uh, strategies. And, and what I believe is that everybody has something to give. And these are the same people who are able as well to talk to their networks, to, you know, to talk to their family and friends. And, and, and this means that nobody is too small to give or there's no amount that is too small. Um, and, and that creates a lot of, um, a lot of ownership. Uh, the other strategy we've seen working and, and, and this starts way early is looking for matching funds. Um, and 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 this is this is where by we talk to you know to our current partners and our current funders uh, to to give us you know to give us a donation which we can use uh, to sort of incentivize other people uh, and I think I've seen this when you tell people that you already have something small uh, on the table uh, you know people are willing to add into 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 that. Um, into that pool of funds. Um, the last one, um, not the least, but the last one for, for me for now is, um, and this I learned recently, uh, which was a mistake that we kept doing. Uh, we did have a lot of things. So Nairobit does quite a lot and we wanted to put it all. And so, uh, and this comes in the planning that you need to be to, to, to be very clear, you'd rather pick one thing because I think also given um, that there's, there are a lot of messages, there's a lot of, uh, you know, people uh, communicating and all that, that you need to be very clear so that you're not overwhelming, um, you know, your funders as well and, and people can can know exactly what they're giving, in, they're giving to, yeah. So folks have some kind of a targeted giving um, opportunity is what you're saying. Is that, that's what you're saying, Magdalene? Yeah. Yes, absolutely, yes. If you have like 10, like 10 projects, you, you take one, but you're not trying to fundraise for all 10 projects. Yeah. Love it, absolutely. We gotta keep it simple, direct, clear. Got it, thank you very much. Um, and I just wanna let the audience know that 
Um, we are taking questions in the Q&A, so please go ahead and type your questions in there. If, if there are questions that can be answered by our team of experts, they will do so, and otherwise they'll be sent to me, and we'll make sure that the, the panelists will be able to answer them. So uh, before we get to, to those questions, I'm going to go ahead and, and talk a little bit about leveraging technology for effective um, Giving Tuesday campaigns. Um, and this question is, you know, how can organizations leverage technology, including social media and other digital platforms? Platforms to optimize their Giving Tuesday campaigns and drive fundraising success. Um, and um, Kat, would you like to take that first, given that's kind of your area of expertise? That's my little area. I never <laughs> yeah. say expertise. I learn okay. so much from everybody. I refuse to say that I am an expert. I will not do it. Uh, here's what I've learned. I think one thing to do to start would be to optimize your social media pages. This is an easy one that you can do right now, and I think you should do this for all the time, but on a day like Giving Tuesday especially. Uh, ideally, you're going to have a bunch of new folks coming to your page, and they want to find out what it is that, that, that you do. Don't make them scroll through your feed of Instagram posts for an hour to try to figure out what it is that you do. Make it really clear for them. So you want to pin at the top of your page three of your best, clearest posts that explain what it is that you do. If you don't have that, now would be a great time to make those posts uh, that are really clear, explain your mission, why it matters, and exactly uh, how folks can get involved. And then the other thing you want to do is pin to the top of your Instagram some highlight stories. Uh, you can make stories and you press the highlight button. It will put them in like a little collection at the top of your page. So I've seen nonprofits do uh, frequently asked questions story, uh, a story similar to what I talked about, what it is that you do, and then one that explains how people can contribute, not just money, but all, all the different ways that people can contribute to your cause. Um, so that's a great quick hit way to use technology uh, cool. to optimize and get ready ahead of Giving Tuesday. Uh, and then I said it already, I'm going to say it again, it's really not about what it is that you're posting on your social media pages. It really truly is about what others are posting about you and how many how many folks you can get speaking on your behalf. So multi-channel, right? Think of all the different ways that you can uh, can reach someone and create a touch point to not only remind them that it's Giving Tuesday, uh, but to encourage them to jump aboard. Uh, I will quickly shout out my calendar invitation technique that if you have yet not heard it, I think it's a really spectacular use of digital tools that's a little thinking outside the box. It's really simple. You send your supporters and your donors a calendar reminder, just like Liz sent me a calendar reminder to, jo to join our panel this morning. It beeped on my on my watch. It beeped on my phone to tell me that it was time to join today. Uh, create that sort of scenario for your supporters. Tell them that it's November 28th. Today is Giving Tuesday. This is the campaign that we're running, and we're trying to raise this amount of money for this specific purpose. And here's how you can get involved. And instead of where I had the Zoom link, you're going to put your hopefully by now mobile friendly donation page. And if you don't have one of those, now's the time to invest to get uh, investing in a, in a mobile friendly donation page. Uh, and you'll have that click right there so that somebody can give to you. It develops that sense of urgency and that simple reminder that sometimes is the thing that people need. I always love that because it's direct and it's easy, right? That's what you've got to do. I love it. Um, so Magdalene, can, hear, can we hear from you before we hear from Catherine? Uh, yeah, sure. So... <laughs> And, and I'll keep a, a lot of reference to, to fundraising locally as well. And I think one of the things that, that you know, with this uh, use of social media and all that, that gets left out a lot that we've seen has helped is texting uh, and, and, and using short SMSs. Um, you know, this has been quite instrumental in getting um and getting the the, the local um the local people to give and especially like our stakeholders and our partners and again linking to what Kat said uh mobile friendly uh platforms so that when the message comes in someone you know um can act uh and then there's the use of design tools um i think we we are very visual and so how your messages go out 
uh, is very important. And so uh, there are quite a bit of, of uh, free and, and low cost um, design tools that, that people could use. And I think it takes a little, you know, like Canva, uh, just a little bit of time to learn. And so um, that means then how your messaging is going out, it's, it's, it's visually appealing uh, and, and, and drawing attention to the people you want to draw attention to. Uh, yeah, and I think um, Kat mentioned this, automation. Uh, you know, the use of reminders, uh, you can schedule your posts, you can schedule uh, your newsletters. Um, and, and I think, uh, you know, that's that's some of the ways uh, that we can harness technology. And I think also um, collecting feedback and data, just getting to track how how your campaign is doing, uh, the reception of your of your of your messages and all that. Yeah. I love that. I just thank you so much for sharing that. And I've asked someone to put in the chat a link to Canva for nonprofits. Um, Canva for nonprofit. Well, Canva is a great design tool, but Canva for nonprofits is specifically for nonprofit organizations to be able to access those tools for free if you can demonstrate that your organization is a registered entity in your co country. So whatever those, um, whatever that certification or documentation you have, you provide it to Canva, and they will provide you with a um, a free account to access all those amazing design tools and some of which are AI driven. So it makes it very easy for you to have an amazing looking um, a campaign. And of course, Giving Tuesday has a great Canva resource that you can access and I'll be providing you with a resource document later. So I just wanted to add that. And Catherine, if we can hear from you right now, that'd be wonderful. Uh, awesome. I think mine is just to um, emphasize that the same strategies that apply uh, with in-person engagement uh, also, also create opportunities for that same engagement online. So when you think about matching funds, what platforms that are very friendly to the constituency that you're engaging offer that? So uh, a typical example is that there are some platforms that um, uh, offer opportunities or have a matching fund in place for all campaigns registered on their platforms and some very specific to giving Tuesday the day. So there are some of those opportunities that are transferable on the digital space because my emphasis has always been and especially within our context is that technology and um, online engagement are in no way a replacement of how we tr we engage traditionally. So um, that's very key. The other aspect around it is having patrons and champions, nurturing them and helping them push that message online, right? So for Giving Tuesday last year, there was a huge trend we noticed, especially at the continental level, of not only leveraging Giving Tuesday to fundraise, but also leveraging Giving Tuesday to engage your supporters in building awareness and visibility for the causes, not specifically for the campaign or your fundraiser, right? Uh, so we saw um, um, uh, organizations bringing in champions and influencers and people with enough social capital to drive um, certain aspects that your organization is pushing on giving Tuesday the day. Uh, the, the advantage of that is it criti creates opportunities for people to understand what you're doing at that level, right? So if you have a fundraiser or um, a Giving Tuesday activity going on, aside from that, it directs that attention to the work that you're doing. So uh, it's, it's, it's just a way of giving back to you for coming together with other organizations to do something that goes beyond your specific organization. So um, that's one key aspect. Uh, we did mention the element of um, mobile giving, uh, but we also mentioned element, we, but we, we can also refer to elements of other formats like um, giving tokens and engaging businesses to uh, donate that their loyalty um, points, right? Uh, we saw, for example, um, one specific one in Kenya, where an alumni serving organization, an alumni society, right, engaged a mobile giving company to encourage people to donate their bonga points. If, for those who don't know bonga points, these are just loyalty points, to, to donate bonga points to support a specific uh, learning institution. And the, the catch here is ask 
as give as many opportunities or present as many opportunities as possible for people to position themselves as supporters for you, right? Um, and people will always position themselves as supporters based on what they can give, or but also based on the stories that they connect to. So having that diverse view is important. The other thing is sometimes when you're a team of four or just one person running your Giving Tuesday campaign, some of these ideas are hard to come by. So ensuring that you are inviting your volunteers, um, your champions, but also connecting with other nonprofits to brainstorm around ideas that you can socialize with your supporter community. And there are many opportunities for doing that. Um, in, in Kenya, South Africa, and um, countries where we have Giving Tuesday representation, they offer either online or in-person opportunities for nonprofits that are activating on Giving Tuesday to engage a network, right? So we've seen a lot of ideas shared there, but we've also seen a lot of collaboration um, happening in that space. So yeah, just wanted to mention that. Fantastic. Okay, so are we are we good? Anyone want us, wants to add anything else on this part on this particular topic? Okay, so then let's open it up for the open Q and A. There are a lot. My my, I'm getting a lot of questions that are being sent to me, um, in um, on my phone. Um, but I'm really excited to say to hear from everyone. Um, it's important that we hear from the audience. Um, you know, I have questions I prepared. But I definitely think that it's important for us to, to hear from all of you. So go ahead and type your questions in the chat. Um, and anything that um, Samantha, Lindsay, or Ludmilla can answer, they'll go ahead and take care of. Otherwise, we'll be sent the questions for me to be able to ask um, of our panelists. Um, and I really want to make this as interactive and engaging as possible because um, we want to hear from you. We're trying to get you prepared for Giving Tuesday. It's not about us talking about what we want to talk about. So please go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and start with the first question that was sent to me. Um, and this one comes from Autism 21, which is a small nonprofit that works with um, um, other partners. Um, they'd love to use Giving Tuesday to highlight how, um, how can they um, highlight partners and share donations as a way to show thanks to them. So I guess it's really how do you how do you how do you kind of uh, recognize the partners who've supported you on Giving Tuesday? So I guess by being generous to your supporters is what I, I'm under, understanding this question to be. Who would like to take this one on? Me. This is my awesome. favorite idea. And I love when nonprofits do this on Giving Tuesday. It doesn't have to be just about you and it shouldn't just be about you. Uh, lift up those in your community. I would love to see uh, uh, the, this autism org. Maybe they could do uh, Instagram lives or Facebook lives with their partners, and that will help introduce uh, their audience to these other organizations, and they could do little interview sessions about what it is that they do and how they partner together. Um, I think that'd be a really great way to feature uh, these other organizations. That's a really great idea. Yeah, I love it too. I think it's wonderful. Any anybody else want to chime in or should we go on to the next one? Okay. All right. So we have two questions from Devin Bruiners. I'm sorry, I hope I pronounced that correctly. Um, one, um, as a public agency, the organization has no fundraising network. What are some strategies they can use to raise funds on Giving Tuesday? And then the second question is, what are some coming challenges that organizations can face when participate, participating, common challenges that they can face when participating in Giving Tuesday? So it's a two-parter. Don't have a network. What, to, what are some ways to kind of build momentum? And then what are some common challenges that organizations face? Um, maybe, I mean, I think that uh, Magdalene, you talked a little bit about, you know, starting late and how that cr cr posed some challenges. Are there other, are any other challenges you may want to mention, or even when you were starting out, just kind of, um, you know, what organizations that don't have a network have to kind of contend with? Yeah, I, I think for, for one, we usually view network as something that is high, big, and all that. And I think for us, one of the things we had to change our perception about how we viewed network. And, and when we were looking at network, we were just looking at big funders and, and companies and organizations. 
But the thing is, our network is also our parents, is also the community, and and it's that. And you know, we we um we found there's there's a very big shift when we encourage and when we tell the parents, even as much as we are serving underserved communities, that they can you know they can participate in 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 the campaigns and and there's ownership. And so for me, it's when starting early, it's also mapping out who are the people around you. Remember family and friends are also networks. They, you know, networks is just not funders. And so you already have that. Uh, and, 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 and so just look at who are the people around you who give, uh, look at small giving and big giving, look at volunteering also as, as part of giving. Uh, look at other resources, um, you know, and, and they don't have to be financial at times. That's how you start you start engaging people. So when you're drawing up strategies, you start from then how do you build that network and looking at that network from from a very basic level to a high level. And then looking at at at, at what are the options of giving that, you know, you'd you'd be you'd be asking from, from that network. And, and at times it doesn't necessarily have to start with money. You can start from volunteering and you can start from other things that they'll be able to give. Um, yeah, I think that, that that's what I would say that to encourage you that nobody, that everybody has a network. We just have to change the perception of how we view the network. On, on challenges, um, mostly small organizations lack resources and this is financial and and um technical human resource so that means uh you know you you don't have uh probably the the financial muscle to sort of like hire people or to use like big tools and all that uh but but that said is that you'll find that there are people willing to give their time uh, and so you, you could leverage on that. Um, when it comes to financial resources, you could use basic tools, which are free. And at times it might reach a smaller audience, but it gives you a bit of leeway, uh, you know, to, to, to just start from somewhere. And I think, uh, yeah, for me, those are usually the, the major challenges that I see. Oh, and, and the lack of knowledge and information. And, and for that, there are all these tools, this webinar, uh you know um and 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 tools are, are available online um, and that, that you could you could learn from and that you could use yeah okay i love that <laughs> sorry go catherine were you about to chime in yeah i can uh i i i think in response to that is um as madeline said we all have network somehow. Uh, but what we've also seen as a trend on Giving Tuesday is leveraging Giving Tuesday to create new friends and new champions for your network. So for organizations that um, are really small, they've come together on Giving Tuesday to do a collective campaign and leverage each other's networks. So um, that's a really good opportunity for you to say, hey, let's test this out and connect with others around the world and learn from uh, what they're doing. Uh, but all this, if you would allow me, uh, Liz, sure. reminds me of, um, of, of a, an example of a campaign. Um, and this campaign was run by Akira Chicks. So Akira Chicks is um, an organization that seeks to empower women as coders around the continent and specifically East Africa. So they ran um, an annual campaign called Code Hive. Um, and what they do is that they have a theme every year. So in 2022, their theme was focused specifically um, as an opportunity to engage the alumni and current students to run a fundraising challenge, right? So they used their immediate network that is their alumni network that had a stronger network. And uh, these are employee employers of bad alumni networks, especially corporates, right? To reach out to 
uh, additional supporters. So the campaign was very specific uh, in terms of the ask that they were giving and the agency that they were expressing. Um, it was simply to, to, to um, buy a generator, right? Uh, and the reason for that is to ensure that there's no disruption uh, for women coders within their network. So it was very specific and very achievable, right? But then what's really interesting about this particular campaign is that they had a specific target. Their target was $20,000, right? They achieved that target. But beyond that, they celebrated this achievement with everyone that supported them, including networks of those um, alumni, of the alumni members, right? And what happened is that they leveraged that $20,000, right? Uh, to create another campaign as and using that amount as a matching to invite other businesses, uh, other partners, including businesses, uh, to to support um, the, the the particular project that they were running for. So yes, initially their network was small, but leveraging um, that network to connect with other possible and potential supporters and using what they can, uh, what, what they got on Giving Tuesday uh, to build momentum and incentivize others, other supporters into this has really uh, been a great success for them. So every year they have a specific ask uh, and a specific project. But the, the learning from this is, yes, it can be a small campaign, right? But then is a build up to a stronger network. It's a build up to more support, but also an opportunity to continue engaging the constituency that you support and work with closely. So it's like a wholesome um, experience, not just a fundraising moment. And I'm always happy to um, share all these case studies. Um, and, and, and so is my team and any country leader uh, that's represented. Yeah, I love that. I love that case study. Um, and I love what Kara Chicks. In fact, they're a KBFUS partner that we've um, highlighted in previous um, events. So um, if there is a case study that's written about this, we would love to see it if someone can uh, go ahead and type that into the chat at some point. Um, so gosh, I'm loving this conversation. I really hope everyone who's watching is diligently taking notes because these are like great nuggets that you're getting. I feel like this is like a masterclass that we're getting from um, these panelists. So I'm really grateful to everything that's being shared. Um, we're going to have a second part of this where we will have more questions, um, but I'm going to go ahead and just sort of jump into a couple of the ones that I came up with um, and then we'll um, continue. So please continue um, writing your questions in the chat. And then at the end of this, we'll come back to them. So um, let's talk about crafting impactful storytelling for Giving Tuesday. You know, I've got to tell you with anything that you do, particularly when we talk about fundraising, when we talk about engaging anyone, we really have to be on top of our storytelling. Um, and so I wanted to hear from all of you about, you know, how impactful storytelling contributes to the success of Giving Tuesday campaigns and what strategies organizations can use to create nar narratives that resonate with donors. And we've talked a little bit about how we get those narratives or how we get the content um, on different platforms and how we engage with people. But specifically, um, let's talk about the storytelling itself. Um, and I think um, I'll go ahead and maybe ask Kat to start us off on that, if that's possible. Totally. Uh, the thing that people want from their giving is a sense that they matter, right? Uh, so you, what you want to do is make your impact as tangible as possible. Illustrate the needs that your organization is meeting, the needs of your community that your organization is meeting, and how your prospective donor can be a part of the community that's making that change and meeting those needs, right? So I said this earlier, making a post that says give to us because it's Giving Tuesday, we're a worthy cause is not going to be effective. We need to be spending uh, more time explaining what it is that we do in, in a tangible way. No matter what the goal of your campaign is, whether you're trying to plant 21 million trees around the world or you're just trying to bring in 50 new donors, you're going to need a compelling story that, to help pull people in, make them see themselves, and then make them see themselves as part of the solution to the problem. So what we want to be doing is using storytelling to reduce that distance 
between the individual and the cause and create powerful connections that can serve as engines for action and change. Uh, and that's all big theoretical talk to say that it's absolutely critical that we center our campaigns in storytelling, in community centric storytelling and telling authentic, meaningful uh, stories about our campaigns, about what it is that we're due and who it is that we serve. Love it. Magdalene, how about from you? Yeah, I, I love what Kat said about authentic and meaningful and meaningful stories, which is very important. Um, because I think um, when you tell, I usually say it's sort of like telling the story from the heart. Uh, when you believe in something, um, you know, you're able to tell it in a way that is authentic, in a way that, uh, you know, it's convincing. You're, you're, you're not looking like as if you, uh, you know, you're guessing or you're cooking something. And, and what I usually see helps is that as nonprofits, we need to connect um, with our program constituency and, and our participants. And, and that means, uh, you know, how are we collecting these stories? Are we hearing it from them? Are we, are we empathizing? Um, and, 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 and I found that, you know, when you're telling that story, you then connect with the, you know, with the funder um, more than, um, when, um, more than when you haven't interacted, uh, you know, with the, um, with your program participants or with your impact stories. Uh, but then also something else uh, that I think we need to be very aware of is also preserving the dignity of, of the people that we are telling, uh, we are telling, uh, you know, we are telling their stories. And, and this is how we, we tell those stories in a way that you engage the emotions, but then you're not uh, being manipulative. I, I don't know whether you get it. And I think- um, uh, Magdalene, you don't know how I really get that. Cause I, I always talk about it as being poverty porn. I hate that. Like you have to, you can't it, never, never in any way um, take agency away from the people that you're serving or in any way exploit them uh, for, for fundraising gains. It's the worst thing I believe to do. So I appreciate you even bringing that up. Yeah, and especially since you're doing an impact story, uh, you know, it's very important to show that, you know, the end. And I think one of the feedback that we got when we started doing the campaigns was that we were more on the means. Uh, so we'd share a lot about the training and the training. But then we had very little, um, you know, showing um, this is what happens after. This is the transformation. And I think, um, you know, when, when crafting our stories, uh, we need to, to really look at um, that transformation. And we are not coming from a point of, you know, the severe narrative or the severe mentality. Um, yeah. Uh, and 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 also using very uh, creative forms of storytelling, and I think that is advancing um, a lot right now. Short videos, um, you know, reels, uh, depending on the social media of of, of choice that you'll be using, um, you know. Uh, and I think that there are different forms of, of of telling stories and and quite interactive ones as well. And and so you need to have. To have that in mind, that that uh, what, how do you craft these stories in a way that you keep your audience engaged? Okay, Catherine. I think yeah, we're yeah, just yeah, just yep. just just to echo what uh, Madeline said and um and and please is the reason why we are doing this is we are acknowledging the contribution that peer-to-peer -peer giving has made at the continental level. So uh, there is a lot of pride that comes with that form of solidarity and should be expressed in how we tell the stories, right? So I'm really echoing that as a key ethical thing, but also um, a principle for fundraising as you engage. Um, and, and just to follow up on um, telling impactful stories, I think the idea will be, what is this that makes you unique? right? Why should supporters um, trust you to lead um, the project or uh, lead the campaign? Why should they respond to your campaign? 
uh, it either could be uh, the access you have to a specific constituency or a unique approach that you're bringing to solving a problem or the reach you have that many do not have. And this is what differentiates your campaign, uh, your campaign from larger nonprofits, right? It's that access that you have, and that should form part of your story, right? And in addition to that, being able to uh, show like firsthand experiences of the impacts that your engagements have had and even transformation in terms of behavior. A typical example would be a social enterprise um, that is uh, running an environmental program, right? Being able to, for example, demonstrate how you have influenced young people to not only just contribute to your just engaging in that way, but also focusing on the things that make you unique and um, aspects to your work and to your campaign that are unique um, in that context. Fantastic. So I've got to tell you, the, the, the questions are on fire. So we're going on, we're definitely going to go into the, the questions that are coming from the audience. They're really wonderful. Uh, and Catherine, since I've have you on here right now, how can people volunteer for Giving Tuesday? People are excited about getting involved. They want to volunteer. So how do they go ahead and do that? Oh, definitely. Always happy to um, connect with everyone, anyone who wants to volunteer on Giving Tuesday. So as I, as I stated earlier, our structure is that we work very closely, co-lead the movement with um, organizations at the national level. So um, in Africa, we have over 15 countries that have a point person for Giving Tuesday. Always happy to connect you with that point person. And mm -hmm. I'll share my uh, contact view list for those who'd like sure. to engage. Yeah. Okay, great. And and just so folks know, I, I was going to get this to this at the end, but we have curated um, um, a list of resources from all the speakers and partners for this event um, so that you can get our contact details, you can get um, information about specific things that were talked about on this on this um, um, in this webinar, so you can prepare for Giving Tuesday. So we're we've got you covered. So don't worry about that. But um, I'm excited that people want to volunteer with you, folks. I'm um, excited about that too. Come yeah. join us. Be an ambassador for generosity in your community, in your town, in your in your neighborhood. Uh, we need more team captains to help grow generosity. Yes. So here's a question, Kat. I've got you here. I've, I've got another one. Right. Is Giving Tuesday known globally? Yes. But um, or do we need to first build awareness of it in our potential giving audience? I guess this is maybe from someone who may not necessarily be aware of the Giving Tuesday um, kind of movement in their country. Sure. Or, yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. It's possible. I will say it's been a very long time since Giving Tuesday has only been in the U.S. That only <laughs> happened for one year. Yeah. And very quickly, we Giving Tuesday moved to the UK and then Canada and then Mexico. And now we are almost 100 nations that officially celebrate Giving Tuesday. So awareness is at the highest that it's ever been. Always there's movement to make, right? And that, that's not to say that every single person that you ever speak to in your life is going to understand what Giving Tuesday is, but that's an opportunity. And the explanation is as simple as simple can be. This is simply a movement for us to increase more generosity. So I don't know that there's necessarily any more awareness or explanation that we need or should be doing. Uh, I feel that we are in a place where we can all simply jump in at this point and leverage the movement. Love it. Okay. Um, and let's see. Someone is looking for a success story of a startup nonprofit that has been able to leverage Giving Tuesday well. Can I one of you have this? more of those than I can even think of right now, but here's one that sticks out in my mind. A few years ago, we had a very small nonprofit, and I didn't learn until after Giving Tuesday, but they had raised the entirety of their operating budget in one day. They did not plan for this. It was a pleasant surprise. They they had been hoping to raise, I, I don't remember what the sum was, but they were simply blown away that they had raised the entirety of their operating budget. It was very simple. If I recall, there was a challenge around the executive director jumping into a really cold lake. It's in November and here in the United States. It's very, very cold uh, in certain parts of the United States in November. And it was something about if they raised a certain amount of money, the executive director 
director and all of their friends, I think we're going to, and maybe the board members too, we're going to jump into this freezing cold lake. And they had built a whole campaign around this. They ended up raising the entirety of their operating budget in one day. Wow. That's incredible. That's really, really incredible. Um, I, I, I don't know if I would have gotten that freezing lake because I know how cold it gets no. there, but, no. but I guess but anything it, for a good cause, no, anything for a good cause. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be these really grand, like that was a really grand story, right? Yeah. I have other success stories that m one might consider much smaller than that, but it, it's still, it's still great. It's still, it's still success. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe Catherine, if you want to give us some, an idea of an, an, any organizations in, um, in your hub that have um, startup organizations that have been successful uh, with their Giving Tuesday campaigns. All right, I'll give an example of uh, uh, small organizations that came together and built a coalition um, uh, back in 2020. Um, so they are focused in um, a place called Kibera. Um, and what they did is that they realized that they can gain so much by leveraging each other. Um, so they uh, did a joint campaign um, and uh, connected to a local giving platform. And as uh, Kit mentioned, is that beyond just the online engagement they had, uh, they did a fun engagement outside um, of um, their online fundraisers. And that was to just simply engage supporters in climbing Mount Kenya. And those who couldn't do it, right, uh, they would uh, participate in a virtual run, right? So uh, they had supporters, yes, in Kenya, but also outside of Kenya. But beyond that, they were like, how do we build more visibility to our respective campaigns that are hosted in some of the, in, in, in a particular platform? So um, they engaged local media, but most importantly, ran an activity uh, in the community to thank community organizations that give back to the work that they do, right? A reverse of what um, is norm. And that drive and uh, that push on Giving Tuesday really redirected audiences and attention to their respective campaigns. And uh, I can always share a link to um, that particular campaign, um, including the Code Hive um, case study. That it wasn't would be wonderful. done yet, but it's it's um, an inspiration for us to do that case study on Code Hive. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. So if we can go ahead and get those links, um, Catherine, um, we can have them integrated into that resource document I'll be sharing at the end. Um, Ludmilla can take care of that for us, please. Thank you. Um, all right. I have one. The first part of this question, I believe you've already um, addressed, but I'll, I'll go ahead and read it. And then it's a two part, but I think it's really more the second part we, we want to look at. So if you have many projects in thematic areas, do you pick one to spotlight, which is what you said earlier? Um, and then um, give a general background if you are, or just focus on one on the one area. Worry is that a donor might get lost in the details. What is the best practice, right? So how can you focus on them in on um, a specific thing that you want them to, to support? Um, and I know Magdalene, you talked a little bit about this, that you don't want to have too many things that you're highlighting, but I suppose what this person is saying is, okay, if you're focusing on one particular project or initiative, how do you still kind of make sure that they understand the overall message about the organization? So maybe you may want to answer this. Oh, yes. I mean, um, sharing about the organization is, is important because then you have to show the link between the organization and this one project. Uh, but then you you keep it brief. Um, it's sort of uh, where we say like a pitch in in like a minute. Uh, but then this one, you know, you you keep it brief. But uh, but then you always um, have additional links. Like one of the things you have to do is have an updated website. But again, remember um, you are starting the campaign early, and so when you start the messaging early, that gives you time to share bits and build the story about the organization. So for every time you share a message, you share another aspect of the organization. And so what that does, it, it helps by the time, probably you're coming to now closer to the, to, to the, to the D-Day, you have already interacted with your, I mean, your audience has already interacted 
with your messaging and, and uh, to ensure that they understand what the organization really does. Yeah, so from all the way from the planning, you need to be very clear on what you want to communicate. And then you come narrowing it down to exactly what you know what what your comp what your specific campaign is about. Got it. So I that's a drip method, and I know Kat, you're a genius at doing this because it's like I look every Tuesday. There's something amazing. It's coming. It's coming. You know, with Giving Tuesday, like I said, there was a 90 day countdown. I don't know that there's going to be an 87, 83rd, 83 day countdown. But can you tell a little? Can you kind of build upon what Magdalene said in terms of that dip? Yeah, and I think that's folks. exactly, I'm actually to hit the nail on the head, right? You don't have to tell people all of the things. You just need to tell them the act, the pertinent information to get them to join your, your movement. And then remember, you have the time after Giving Tuesday to, to, to keep fostering those relationships too. And that's a lot of what retention is about, actually. So you can use the moments after Giving Tuesday to set up, and what if you set up an automated drip email campaign for anyone who's brand new to your organization and once a week or maybe once every two weeks it sends out an automatic email to try to start to onboard them to your organization and bring them in the on background, Tuesdays right on maybe you could do this on Tuesdays it sounds like a great day to meet it uh what it is that you do how your organization got started your impact all of those other things that you want to tell them on Giving Tuesday but you don't have time so please don't do that just focus on your one message on Giving Tuesday and save all that other stuff for later. Uh, after Giving Tuesday is a great way to get folks re-engaged in other ways too. So remind them of all the other events that you have going on, all the other programs that you do, uh, but drip it out over time. People don't need to know all of this about you at once. Thank you. Okay, so now I'm gonna get to part two of this question, which maybe Catherine, you can help me with. Um, what advice do you have if a nonprofit would like to raise funds for operational expenses instead of a single project or capital uh, budget goal? Um, how can we communicate the importance of operations as a funding goal? Uh, I, thanks. This is um, a question that helps me reflect on um, why Giving Tuesday really. So it is not a standalone fundraising strategy. Right. So it's it is part of a broader fundraising um, engagement that your organization should have. And it also draws back to the story. Right. Uh, telling the story on how supporting administrative um, work for your campaign. Right. Or, or under a campaign. Right. But also using the momentum that you build on giving Tuesday the day to continue engaging those donors and creating space and opportunity for them to explore other forms of support that they can offer you is a key advantage, right? Capture, uh, because then leverage the element of implicit agency. But then after that, create more opportunities for engaging donors and uh, exploring ways that they can support you much better. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, and um, so I wanted to you I want to then say, ask you this question. So what if you don't hit your your giving Tuesday goal? Let's say you have a specific goal you put out there. How do you handle that? How do you manage that? Like how, what, what, what have you seen out there? What are some case studies you've seen in terms of how to message and first of all, handle and then message um, uh, in the public about, about not necessarily hitting your goal? It's being transparent for me. Like I, it's yeah. absolutely okay to, to admit that you didn't make your goal, but we're we're two thousand dollars shy or whatever it is, and we're going to continue our campaign until we until we get there. That's an right. absolutely fine strategy, uh, and often a good strategy because it gives you an extra day. Excellent yeah. point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and. And just a follow up to what Kate said is, uh, there are campaigns that stagger their activities and engagement for a week or leverage other opportunities and moments of giving that month. Uh, and I think even for the continent, November, December is a, is a generosity month uh, yes. where you can leverage different activities. And a typical example will be um, 
a nonprofit in the conservation world that leverage is giving Tuesday on uh, the 28th, but then on the World Conservation Day builds an additional momentum to top up uh, what they've contributed, what contributions they've received on Giving Tuesday the day. So building or building your campaign, but also ensuring that you're maximizing other moments around that time um, is king. Um, and then the second one is there are platforms that offer um, you an opportunity to keep engaging and asking for top ups uh, for those who've contributed, right? And uh, from um, research that was done by uh, one giving platform here is when people see there is a trajectory of achieving the goal, right? They are more likely to either encourage their peers to give or give more, right? So some of those, some of the platforms that we use um, can help us uh, uh, keep engaging uh, donors on the day, but also after giving Tuesday the day and ensuring that that information is translating to um, some hype. Uh, that we need to meet the goal and 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 we can do and champion uh, our goals. But yes, it's 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 very okay to communicate once you don't if you don't meet the goal um, on Giving Tuesday. Um, Love it. Go ahead. Also, add to that um, is that yeah, not meeting the goal is not the worst thing that can happen, and especially when you're starting out. But what we've seen is. Giving Tuesday gives us a framework. Uh, at times, it's usually hard to reach new donors, but then when you use Giving Tuesday, you have, it's easier. It, it gives you a reason to reach to new people. And so what happens that, that we build up, uh, we get to attract new donors and we get to build up a new following of supporters who even come post, uh, you know, Giving Tuesday season and, and um, because then it's given us um, uh, it's given us a leeway to share about our work, to be creative, uh, and move away from you know the usual um, proposal development. So, yeah, given that it's Giving Tuesday, we have to design you know uh, impact stories. We have we have to have very nice publications and all that. So that gives us, you know, a framework and an opportunity to, to reach out to a bigger audience than we would ordinarily do. And so my encouragement to organizations is, you know, to get on board. And, and even as you work towards meeting a certain target, just know that it's possible to meet that target way after and probably get even a bigger ask than you, than you had expected before. Sounds awesome. Thank you so very much. Um, and uh, I'm going to hold you here, Magdalene, because I think you can answer this. So, um, you know, there the question is, it's a two-parter. People are great with these two-parters. It's pretty nitty gritty. So the first part is how have NGOs leveraged AI effectively for their fundraising? Because I know you're tech folk, a tech person like me. Um, and then two, should nonprofits be concerned about segmentation for Giving Tuesday, creating multiple email campaigns can be daunting for small groups. Is it okay to have one email campaign for Giving Tuesday? Um, and so go ahead if you if you can, if, do you think you can answer that, Magdalene? First part is um, AI, like are, are you using AI, are you using ChatGPT or anything to kind of like, um, you know, increase the effectiveness of your communications? Are you using um, any tools to AI tools to help you with like images or videos and stuff? Um, any examples? Yeah, so I'll start with the second one uh, okay. about segment. Um, I think this comes with a strategy and, and, and this comes with, uh, you know, really understanding your organization, what is your audience, you know, I, I mean, it goes all the way to creating your donor personas, uh, identifying what channels you're going to use, um, you know, it, it's, it's a whole, it's a whole strategy at the beginning. And, and so, and, and, and why it's good to start at the beginning, I mean, early enough is because you're able to analyze, um, you know, what is the response? Uh, probably if we send, an email weekly, uh, you know, people aren't subscribing. So do we do it monthly? Do we, do, you know, you get you get to to really look and analyze. And so, 
um, continue continuously um, continuously you know change as 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 you get the feedback. Um, so I think for me, I wouldn't say that it's it's static. It it depends with what your goal is and what your overall strategy is, and it's very important to go into the nitty gritties of that before you start the campaign. Um, the second one is on AI. Um, yes, we're still also trying to understand AI um, completely, you know, but yes, we're using it, um, especially the different, I think one of the things that has been exciting is, is, is the ease in designing messages, uh, in designing material and all that. Um, I think in, in creating videos, uh, the voiceovers and, and you know, uh, all these things that it's it's providing. One of the things is that it's likely to cut costs, uh, you know, on, on, on some of the things that we spend money on. It's also cutting time, uh, you know, cutting a lot Definitely. of time where you, where you use time trying to, you know, trying to design something, trying to create and all that. But then again, um, I know there are many other tools that we haven't really uh, explored, and one of the one of them that we really want to see is is um, is especially on data collection um, and getting to analyze what is the giving and all that. Uh, but then, um, you know, I think we should we should we really need to be open about using AI. Um, how do we use like chatbots, uh, you know, for engagement, for interaction and all that. But then um, we need to be cautious that, uh, you know, just know that that at the end of it, a campaign needs to have the human feel. And, and so you need to be, uh, to be cautious that you don't lose that. And then everything is automated. Uh, but I think our experience has been on cutting time and and also reducing on the on the amount of resources that we use. Uh, but then we are very keen to explore, uh, you know, many other uh, possibilities that it pre that it presents. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, that's that's awesome. And just for folks who may not have joined the first webinar we had on leveraging technology, um, if you watch that that re that recording, and I think the link can be shared with you, um, we do go a little bit into AI in that discussion. Um, and then in our resource document, we do have a couple of resources related to um, AI and how you can learn how to use it and even create digital strategies. So um, thanks for for bringing that up, Magdalene. Um, anyone else wants to chime in on this, or should sure, because um, we have, um, or do we want to continue on? Because we've got a lot. Lot of questions so let me i'm let me keep, sure we do okay. wait hang on yeah. one more ahead, thing Kat. on email one more ahead, thing Kat. on email it's not enough to send one email on giving tuesday one email is better than nothing but it's not enough to send one it, it, you have to be sending more emails than that so you should have different segments for your board you should be asking them for a different amount of money you should be you should have a, a crm that can tell you who's giving at what amounts so that you can tailor your message to those folks and ask them for a specific amount of money that is doable for them and then you want to be able to for the folks who have already given to you we don't want to be in a position of emailing them again in the afternoon asking them to give when they've already given to you so we should be using the technology that we have at our disposal to make sure that we are not doing things like that uh, and that doesn't mean it has to be hard but again we've got 87 days to go and we can take some time to start getting those tools set up and getting those that infrastructure set up love it thank you so much um so gosh everyone wants to get involved so this question is cat for you Catherine and I know the, the answer is yes but I think and we'll be providing resources but is there a country leader uh, in South Africa or Cape Town? Is there a point person in Rwanda? How can we be connected? And then they're also looking for a point person in the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo. Uh, yes. Zimbabwe too. I saw Zimbabwe in there too. Zimbabwe. Okay. Yeah. So okay. So um, I suppose um, if they connect with you through our resource document, they'll be able to um, get that information. But I also know there's a website. Can can we maybe give the link to? Can we put in the chat? the Giving Tuesday Af Africa website where they can choose the country, right? And then they'll be able to um, find yeah, that point country. person. Is that is that a good way to do it? Yes, yes. And I'm definitely happy to follow up with them um, okay. and connect them to the respective leaders where there's no leader. 
Mm -hmm. Always happy to engage. Absolutely. So can I just put it out there? Would you be folks, the three of you be open to people connecting with you on LinkedIn? Because that's one way they may be able to get in touch with you. Sure. Okay, great. So folks, please take note of everyone, the spelling of everyone's name and go ahead and connect with them on LinkedIn and um, give the kind of, you know, make sure that when you're reaching out to them, you let them know that you're on this webinar and you, whatever specific question you may have. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. Um, all right. So uh, this is, this is still around technology. Are there any recommended platforms? So we talked about platforms, but what are there specific platforms to check out the companies um, may use to find charities they're passionate about so that they can make contributions around Giving Tuesday. So this is the donor looking for um, causes to support. So if you can recommend um, any specific platforms people may, you know, may want to check. Obviously, it, it, it varies by country, but maybe if you can kind of um, help us out, that'd be great. So let's start with Kat um, with the U.S. and we can look at other places, please. My top recommendation is actually not to be looking at websites and the internet to find organizations to give to. My top recommendation is to, to ask your family, friends, and networks who it is that they support. Uh, you're going to get more information. You're going to be able to ask the right questions. You're going to get to hear from your colleague or whoever it is why that organization matters to them in a meaningful way. Um, and that's nine times out of 10 going to be more effective than connecting with an organization anonymously on the internet. Okay. Uh, thank you, Catherine. Uh, yeah, I think I'll just uh, add to what uh, Kat has said. Yes, um, that's also great to get referrals. Uh, peer to peer giving is very valuable. Uh, in, in Africa, of course, there are limits to the number of platforms um, that you can connect to, but just to mention a couple of them, like um, Mchanga, uh, uh, Bakabadi, there are a couple of them really, uh, but I'm, I'm sure they, they, they're, they're, there is a limitation in terms of the number of campaigns that are on that platform, especially on Giving Tuesday. But one thing that can help you scan uh, what campaigns are activated on the day could be just tagging the hashtag by country uh, because most organizations activate or um, send their messaging under that specific hashtag. So there is um, a lot of value, especially in regions where um, online giving is um, not strong enough. Yeah. Okay. Not forgetting global giving and the rest. Yeah. Thank okay. You. I'm going to put a plug out for King, uh, King Padua Foundation United States. So they have um, all their partners, like which include uh, Nairobits, um, is uh, they, they have a platform whereby you can um, see there are hundreds of, of partner organizations that are doing incredible work. So if someone wants to go ahead and just give the link to um, that um, site where people can research and see the different um, organizations and search by whatever um, um, theme or whatever cause they're interested in. Um, so that's another way that they can find out about organizations they can potentially support. Um, I gosh, I feel like I could, could talk to you guys forever, but unfortunately, we, we can't be on Zoom forever. Um, let me see if I can get another one here. Um, all right. So here's here's a, I think this is a good one. Um, what are, what are your feelings about using um, fundraising thermometers to show donation progress? Is this effective or um, an old fashioned way of, of doing things, of tracking progress? I don't think it's old fashioned at all. Yeah. I think it's almost a required part of your campaign, actually. Uh, Magdalena and Catherine both said it earlier. There's something psychological about uh, being a part of making that thermometer move forward. It, visually, it makes you feel part of the impact, right? And and it, it, I think they're critical. I don't think they're old fashioned at all. Yeah, and especially for campaigns that are running a challenge across yeah. or within peers, they, they, they want to um, see that. Absolutely. Yeah. Every, because the thing is, part of what makes Giving Tuesday really effective is that there's this sort of sense of urgency and like that you are trying to get somewhere in a very quick, in a short period of time. 
uh, and we're working towards something. And so being able to visually demonstrate that and be able to talk about that is really, really going to be critical. So uh, I'm all I'm with all of you on that. Yes. And I, yes, it yes, doesn't yes. have to be a literal thermometer. I've seen yeah. it visualized in all kinds of different ways. I've seen yep. somebody have a designer. It, again, we're starting early. So you have time to ask a designer if they can make for you. I don't know, it's a, a jar and it fills up with whatever it is that you're trying to raise funds for. There are all right. kinds of different creative ways to create the thermometer effect without necessarily making it be a thermometer. Right. And it's also messaging, right? Like yeah. we've already, we're at 50% of our campaign or, you know, you've helped us to get to this point. We still have this left, you know, in the remaining three hours. So there is definitely messaging as well that you can use, but obviously visual is, is going to be a little more effective because, you know, it's quick and it's easy and people can connect to it immediately. Um, so I'm with you on that. Um, and then this is sort of a really broad question, um, but I'm going to just go ahead and give it to you anyway. Um, it says, because I think it's important to answer this question, how do you thrive and raise funds in a poor economy or country? And it's not necessarily specific to Giving Tuesday, but I think that you all can kind of speak to this in terms of like, you know, so someone who is um, where they feel that, you know, they're, they're in a country where the economy is not very strong um, and, you know, they're now trying to figure out how to do the good work that they're doing and get the support for it, but really does, it sounds like maybe they don't have the, the support necessary to do so. What are some, some pointers you would give? I go. I'll go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I I know uh, it has been um, a rough two or three years, right? Uh, but something that this situation has taught us is just how abundant our society is. I think it's more about um, identifying opportunities to one diversify your support, uh, your supporters, but also diversify the kind of asks that you are, are requesting for. Right. Um, and I know for some organizations, in kind support and volunteerism um, requires additional efforts to uh, take that in. Uh, so, working and connecting with other nonprofits or uh, spaces where you can learn. Uh, on how to engage uh, or how to set up structures for volunteerism or set up structures for in accepting in-kind donation, but also um, learning from um, spaces that kind of leverage um, lessons from um, across the nonprofits around uh, ensures that Yes, you do not have to directly invest in maybe learning platforms that you're really leveraging um, in kind supports that's around you. So yes, one, diversifying the types of supporters that you're reaching out to, but also being open to receive diverse forms of giving beyond financial donations. And one last thing is that sometimes when we measure Giving Tuesday, we always measure donations and transactions in most cases but it goes a long way measuring the engagement that you've had on the day um, and identifying ways of following that up to translate it into um, either donations or, or trans other tra transactional forms of engagement on Giving Tuesday. So just being very open to the kind of uh, support that you can receive around you. Okay. Fantastic. So um, I need to wrap it up, but there's a question that, that did come in uh, and it was um, if you could recommend a CRM system. So if you can go ahead and type it in the chat, I'd love it because I've got to make sure that we can wrap up on time uh, unless you can just go ahead and shout one out immediately. So Kat, give me one CRM system that you would recommend uh, people consider. I don't even know if I can. There's hundreds. Okay, I know there's um, so many. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, friends. And it's all right. It depends on, on, on the size, too many different things. Where... It depends on the size of your organization. It depends on, on too many different things. There is a Giving Tuesday for Nonprofits Facebook group. And if you go mm -hmm. pose that question in there, I'm, you will have a willing group of other nonprofit organizations who will be happy to help you tease this out because there's a series of questions that I would have to pose back to you and anyone else would uh, in order to get you the answer that you seek. So, so sorry so for that, to, but it's a no, long no, answer. That's a great one. And Giving Tuesday Facebook 
group, go ahead and pose any of the questions that you still have. Yeah. Uh, and I'm sure there are tons of great resources that people can access. So um, our, unfortunately, I have to wrap up this part of our, our, our program. This was so amazing. I learned so much myself uh, and I'm really, really grateful to each one of you um, and heartfelt thank you to each and every one of you for actively participating in today's illuminating panel discussion. We've explored a multitude of perspectives and gained invaluable insights from our esteemed panelists, Kat Murphy-Toms, um, Catherine Wendwell, and Magdalene uh, Wanjugu. Your time, engagement, and dedication to driving positive change through effective raise, uh, fundraising are truly, truly appreciated. Um, and of course, I wanna thank all of you, our participants for joining us today and actively um, engaging in the conversation. It was wonderful just really getting, being able to um, you know, facilitate the answer, answers for your, the questions you provided us. Uh, your th questions, thoughts, and experiences have made this webinar truly interactive and insightful. And finally, I want to extend a special thank you to Lindsay and Samantha from Faircom for their seamless management of the Zoom session and really making sure that your answers were questioned. Uh, were, I'm sorry, were, were, were um, channeled to us. And to my esteemed um, colleague, Ludmilla, uh, the International Social Impact Institute's creative lead and my co-pilot for her invaluable support and creativity. Um, and as we conclude this session, um, I would like to share a valuable resource that I mentioned earlier um, with all of you. We've curated a comprehensive resource document in collaboration with these speakers and um, um, King Badwa Foundation United States, as well as Give to Asia. And this document contains a wealth of resources pertinent to Giving Tuesday and broader fundraising practices. Um, and that's going to be put into the chat. Um, so go ahead and copy that link and put it into your browser and hold on to it and download it and use it because it's going to definitely be helpful to you. Um, and, you know, we really ask you to you know, harness, the, harness the momentum that we built here to, um, to, and to, sorry, that we built here to continue making a lasting impact within your communities. Uh, your passion and commitment to the causes you represent are the driving force bef behind transformative change. Uh, now, it's my pleasure to pass the virtual baton on to our exceptional host, Marina, who will guide us in wrapping up today's session and offer insights into our upcoming sessions in our webinar series on sustainable fundraising strategies. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. I'll be brief, but uh, once again, thank you, everyone, and thank you for participants for all of the engagement. We were flooded in a positive way by all of your questions, um, so we're eager to continue our series. Um, just a friendly reminder that everything will be shared with you with um, through an email from me, so be on the lookout, including the recording, the resources, anything that you may not have um, caught in the chat that will be shared with you. Um, so no worries there. Um, and then I do want to take a moment to remind you that we have two more webinars left for this year as part of the series. The first one is in October, well, let's go with this one. The, one of them is in November, November for one of them is in October. There you go. Thank you, Samantha. Uh, October 24th. Um, it's a webinar on preparing for and executing successful emergency campaigns, fundraising campaigns, where you will hear from real life cases studies, um, but also lessons. Um, so you will also receive the registration link for that. And then the next one is in November, November 14th. Um, it's on leveraging diaspora communities for philanthropic support. If you're looking to learn how to identify, um, that's sometimes not as straightforward as it seems, but also build relationships with your diaspora communities around the world, but also particularly in the United States and leverage that for philanthropic support. Join us, it's a full panel, um, also real, real life case studies. You will receive that registration link as well. And of course, um, both of them will be moderated once again by Liz. Um, so we look forward to seeing you there as well. And if you're not able to attend, please still register. We will share a recording. Um, we will share the knowledge with you as well. Um, thank you again. And you will see my email in the chat. Uh, please feel free to reach out. Um, thank you and hope everyone, whatever time 
is uh, where you are at. Um, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Um, thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.